Today, we'll be going over the exercise of assigning workflow definitions. Some of the objectives for assigning workflow definitions. First, we want to assign the single approver workflow to web content articles and blog entries on the main Livingston site. Second, we're looking to create folders for various HR documents and set folder restrictions for their contents. Here are the steps for assigning workflow definitions. First, we'll assign the single approver workflow to the web content articles on the Livingston site. Second, we'll do the same for blog entries. Third, we're going to create a folder for our HR documents. Fourth, we will create subfolders for employee profiles and tax forms. And fifth, we will assign the single approver workflow to the tax forms subfolder. For some bonus exercises, we can create a new user and assign them the site content creator role from the main Livingston site. From there, you can log in as the new user and create a web content article. From there, we'll be able to review and approve the articles with your platform administrator following the workflow that we just implemented. Okay, so to start off with setting the single approver workflow, make sure you are logged in as the site administrator. In our case, it's Josiah Copeland. That would be set if you were following our earlier exercises. Once you're logged in, you can head over to the menu at the top left. Underneath configuration, you'll find the workflow. Once you are on the workflow page, you can go ahead and edit the web content article row. We're looking to add the web content articles with the single approver workflow. So we're going to edit the web content articles. From here, we're going to click the drop down menu and instead of no workflow, we're going to click single approver and then we can hit save. Just the same, we want to apply a single approver for blog entries. So find the blog entries over at the top, click edit, drop down menu, single approver and save. So we've set single approver workflow for both web content articles and blog entries. Let's go ahead and create our folder for our HR documents. For that, we will go back to our menu, this time content and data, and we'll go to our documents and media. We're going to create. So we'll click the add button at the top right and hit folder. For the name, we just need to put human resources. We can click save. So once we're at documents and media, we want to add a new folder. So at the top right, we can click the new button, the blue plus symbol and go to folder. For the name, we want to name it human resources. We'll leave everything else default and hit save. As you can see, we have our human resources folder. So we can go ahead and create our subfolders for employee profiles and tax forms. So we are in the human resources folder, as you can see at the top. We'll click the add icon on the right, select another folder since we're making subfolders. Our first subfolder will be the employee profiles folder. So we can save. Then our second subfolder can be our tax forms. So now we have our tax forms and employee profile folders underneath the human resources folder. Now that we have our subfolders set up, let's go ahead and set our single approver workflow for the tax forms folder. Let's go ahead and set our single approver workflow for the tax forms subfolder. Let's go ahead and hit the options button. Now that we've hit options, we'll go ahead and edit it from the menu. We can click and open the document type restrictions and workflow. And for the document type restrictions and workflow, we want to click default workflow for this folder, parentheses tax forms. From there, we get a drop down and we can select single approver. We can save. And now we've completed setting up the workflow for blog entries and web content. Just as well, we have set our single approver workflow for the tax forms folder. Thank you.